Uh, that was a background report on the recent fire disaster that happened at Durumi Market. And with me to talk more on this is Steven Ogbuli. He is the environmental and disaster risk management expert. And together we'll be talking about some of the causes of this fire incidences in FCT Abuja. You're welcome to Good Morning Abuja, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so as the background report um, talked about the outbreak, recent outbreak in um, Durimi Durum. Market, yes. uh, it, it's actually not the first of its kind in the FCT. Yes. So I don't really know what are the, some of the causes of these fire disasters in the FCT. Yes, like uh, I want to always say, there are four or five basic reasons for fires. Mm -hmm. One is the expiration or the dilapidation or the failure of equipment are mostly electrical in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, the other equipment that could fail also because the Durimu market also houses restaurants and other okay. eateries okay. could be a gas canister, gas bottle or a, uh, a refrigerating system. Mm. Uh, if uh, there's a maybe when they were going to close there was no light, light. and the light came mm. along the line in the night or in the late evening or early mornings mm. uh, it could lead to triggering of a refrigerator okay. compressor mm -hmm. could explode mm. so that's failure equipment wise mm. then there's the other issue of substandard building materials used um, most of the markets are not are used we use shanty corrugated um, Bo particle boards and all of that to build instead of properly uh, concreting and sealing up the shops with metal doors they put wooden doors in most of those ones not metal doors mm. the roofing of the markets basically are supposed to be concrete yeah the wiring is supposed to be conduit mm. so that it is through a pipe it there's nothing open, open yeah. but when you go to those markets even you as a buyer mm. you have to step over Wire, okay, a naked wire, yeah. some, some mm. things like that. So the fourth aspect also is the issue of what I also call negligence again. Maybe somebody forgot to switch off light, mm. forgot to put off an equipment or deliberately left an equipment on mm. because like the restaurants need to keep their fish, meat, tomatoes mm -hmm. and other perishable fresh. And so at night, anything can happen with the lighting system mm -hmm. and a breakdown of that. Then the fifth reason could be personal. That one is arson, personal issues. Okay. Um, there was a shop in Abuja at a time when some young mm -hmm. child placed fire inside. Mm. So at times also it could be deliberate. And with this, I have to say, there was once in Kubwa, um, okay. a, shop attendant did not feel so fine with uh, or happy with his uh, employer mm. and for just 30,000 naira old mm. left something he knew that would cause fire on and went away mm. over the weekend mm. of oh, course weekend. that wow. item overheated mm. and started a fire but the idea was let's just burn the shop but it took off the whole building, the whole building. Wow. because with fire spreads involved. yes wow. wow wow so with this i don't know what could actually, uh, like, how has been the impact so far with other um, experiences of, uh, what could you say is the impact and the effect of these major fire disasters in the FCT? Well, one is that, if you are asking me for the first impact, is mm. that uh, it has impoverished a lot of a people. A lot of people. M because there's no social security, many people are not insured, Many people do not have uh, the physical cash or the backbone, back end mm. to fall back on. Mm. All their resources are placed in a shop, mm, and that's shop. what a shop does to, um, uh, because they are aching out a living. Mm. So one of the major impact is uh, poverty. Mm. Every time you have fire, you have just reduced a percentage. Most times, seventy percent of those persons back to square one. Mm. They have to build up again because business is thrives on stocking. So most of the markets are stocked. And because of the cash economy we run, not mm. a credit economy, mm. even their suppliers demand cash for any item you see in their shops. Mm. Basically, 70% of the goods in the shops are always paid for before you, before you, you place it for sale. Mm. So if it gets burnt, because nobody wants to take the risk, there's no risk factor in the in the intermediary. So um, the persons now are reduced to 
poverty wow. as a basic. Then there's the other issue when there's such uh, fire, you find that uh, some people benefit, the scavengers. Mm. And so it is, they get there on time yeah. or maybe before others. Yes, and know. they want <laughs> to take the spoils instead of helping. Help you now. We have had uh, cases where you find people even videoing the fire as is mm. engulfing the building mm. or the market instead of helping, helping out, out to put yeah, out the fire. True, true. Because what they want is to, and then they now have the other people who come to, of course, steal. Mm. So before it gets to some shops, yeah, they, right. they it, loot those they shops. Loot, loot, so yeah. in fact, some of it, and that's why we believe sometimes that uh, a percentage, about 30% of the fires out of 100 are personal. It's done by for malice, mischief, mm. and to, for personal gains. And things happen. Okay, so we're saying this is not the first of its kind, but we, we want to believe that since it has, it's not the first, why... Is it um, difficult? Like before uh, help comes, like everything burns down to ground zero. There's nothing like this one that happened. Even pin was not gotten. So like I feel maybe the market, they have this form of vigilante or the security should be able to reach out. Why does it happen uh, that w there's usually no help until it burns down? It's, it boils down to human factor. We okay. do not put up safety measures in markets. Um, there's no water hydrant. Mm -hmm. There is no extinguisher. Mm. You do not have a muster point on a normal day that if there's a fire, people should run to that place for safety. There is no safety drill. Mm. Nobody is taught. Everybody okay. is just walking. Now, now you just mentioned them, the issue of security vigilante. Mm. Uh, is any of them trained in the aspects of fire, uh, fire security? Are they trained in mm -hmm. the management of fire? Are they trained in the management of such delicate issues okay. no okay. the answer is no okay. they are just working by what they feel and okay. gut feeling now two is the fact that also there is the issue of um the markets themselves not having exits okay okay and most of their exits in the night if you know those markets you find that they close up the gates or use a barricade and pin it down so that even if the fire safety truck was to come it cannot the access, access it. Oh. now so that is mostly the challenge we have mm -hmm. 70 percent of the time i can tell you that the uh, fire service in the fct is quite prompt to act okay. but when they get there they will not be able to access, access now if you tell people in the markets to have a lee a, an opening a way and have a a, a corridor mm. that can accommodate vehicular movement within the market, they think you are against them. Mm. So you now come to a, a place where already there's uh, tons of heap. First, you have to contend with the refuge. Mm. If it's not refuge, you contend with people leaving items okay. everywhere. Okay. And then so there's no exit and there's no entry mm. point. So uh, when they get there, and like I want to say, fire has between zero to nine minutes to mm -hmm. spread. Oh, zero to nine, that's, yes. wow. Yes, from the first time it begins to mm -hmm. fester, um, after the smoke, mm -hmm. it needs air okay. to expand. Now, the air starts expanding, expanding, but fire does not begin to gut the building at, until after about 10 minutes. So, wow. uh, and a basic spread from one building to another takes about 25 minutes. Mm. So if actually intervention comes on time, within the first 15 minutes, you mm. can stop it mm -hmm. before it engulfs the whole market. Mm -hmm. But what you have is these issues. Now, you have the issue of access to the market, which mostly will not be there. Mm. Those vigilantes, when they see the fire, will take off mm. <laughs> with the keys to the gates of the market. Wow. So there's no a access point. In the market itself, there's no fire hydrant where you have water so that they would have just taken their pipes there so, yeah, and piped the water connected, and yeah. connect it okay. and, and do the needful. Okay, so, sir, so I want you to continue, but let's go on this short break, and after that, we'll continue with this conversation. So we've been speaking with Stephen Ogboli. He is the environmental and disaster risk management expert. And we've been talking about the recent um, fire disasters in the market. We'll go on this short break, and after that, the program continues.
Are you interested in being up to date with the PC world of sports? Our rebranded Capital Sports is the finest bet for your doing so. So join us every Thursday live at 3 p.m. on NTA Channel 5 Abuja to talk sports for your viewing play show. Remember, you can be a part of this number one sporting program. Join us on the analysis, views and opinions. Many thanks for joining us on the program issues on NTA Channel 5 Abuja. It's only when you have that you would know the number of buildings. To, to develop the internal infrastructure, which we call secondary and tertiary. So there's no reason why we cannot go in there, provide more schools, provide taking more services. At the official exchange rate, they can't meet up, except the government subsidizes them. Join us on the program every Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Issues, dissecting the issues through conversations. Join us then. Welcome back from that break. If you just joined in, this is still Good Morning Abuja on the NT station, NTA Channel 5 Abuja. Before we went on that break, we've been talking here with Stephen Ugbuli. He is the environmental and disaster risk management expert and we're talking about the recent fire outbreak in Durumi Market. So, so before we went on that break, we're talking about um, some of the reasons why the fire actually escalates. But I want to ask, before we went on the break, you actually mentioned that um, night, as in most times in the night. So I'm wondering, why does it have to happen in the night when almost everybody, as in the help is gone? Yes. So before people would even, because if it's daytime, I, I believe the risk would be... Yes, the, mitigated. The, yeah, mitigated. But now that... It's night before you would even reach out to, the, and you said nine. It takes nine to ten minutes for fire yes. to spread. So why is it usually in the night? Like I said, appliances are left behind okay. uh, on, and there might be uh, maybe there was no light at the time they were going. Somebody forgot to put to off, put off the, the light. Yes, wow. and then when you you now have energy surge, there's also the issue of um, over time gas cylinders and what have you. Let us realize that. Um, um, there was a time we even had about kerosene explosions. Oh. Now, some of the equipment mm. used for cooking and other such things in these markets for welding, okay. uh, with hardware, acetylene gas bottles, those big gas bottles used for welding, uh, oxygen acetylene bottles, they expire and explode. They explode. Um, then you have the issues of um, wiring, poor electrical wiring, the circuit breakers are bad. They are not fixed up. So you find they are just multiferous. But most times, mm. 70 out of 100, they are always caused by human negligence. Mm, okay. It's always human negligence, negligence. and um, people not putting safety first. Mm. Uh, it costs you just maybe five or 10,000 to change the switch over for the generator. Mm. But if the fire comes, it will take 10 million out of the shop. So um, they will keep on calling an electrician to re. re tool and refit mm -hmm, it instead mm -hmm. of changing, changing it one. totally. So that is it. And then the other aspect is also the, uh, the building material in use for mm. the market. Some of the markets were not adequately planned. And even when they were planned, there was a cutting of corners mm. by the people who built. Okay. Like uh, the normal design for our markets mm. is it's supposed to be concrete. And even the roofing is supposed to be concreted. Uh, decking, decked okay, as they call okay, it, okay. not uh, corrugated, not uh, asbestos, not of all of those ones. Mm. But when you get to those markets, you find the first thing you look up is that you see it's asbestos. Yeah. The next thing you see is that it's using corrugated iron roofing. The next thing you see is that the wirings are open, open. they are not conducted inside yeah. the wall. The next thing you see is that wire is oh, all, all littered. Over the place, yeah. You look into the shops, no extinguisher. Mm. Now, there's this argument that people should buy fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. My argument is that government should supply the, the fire extinguisher as an assistance to the market organizations yeah, exactly. and make them, enforce them to place it strategically. You must not put it in every shop, mm. but there must be a muster point where if it happens, Ooh, and let us uh, face fact, there are about five different species or classes of fire extinguisher. Mm. There's a powder, there's a foam soapy one. I'm using the layman's terminology <laughs> in, now. Yeah. And then, so there's extinguisher that is supposed to be used for naked and open fire flames. There are those for electrical and other, there are those for gaseous and other emissions. Mm. So, but the right 
a fire extinguisher is better than none at all. Mm. So we should have where, so as a, as a template, I believe that uh, the Federal Fire Service or the FCT Fire Service should place fire extinguishers in markets okay. and at muster points and mm. should go routinely to open entries and exits okay. for people. It is their duty. It's mm. the duty of the fire services okay. to do the needful and all of that so that when there is a time it happens, even if there's no water, because water is a challenge, mm. you have extinguishers, then you can go after the extinguisher to do the needful. Mm -hmm. It will at assist, it will help, mm. and then the needful. Then there's also this issue, um, basically maybe uh, they should have uh, fire trucks yeah, in okay. each market. In each market, wow, <laughs> that will go a long way. <laughs> okay, no, be, be, because a fire truck, in essence, is mm. uh, between 15 to 30 million. Oh, wow. But when the market burns, you lose close More than to 500, that. Yeah. 600 million. Okay, so before I let you go, just a general advice on, like, just you said some of it to some of the... Um, the government and all that. What of the people inside? Like now, it's a time for you to advise generally on what uh, to do. My advice is that the market managers themselves, mm. because if you go to Durumi, there's and uh, and at uh, what they, they call it Association of Nigerian mm. uh, Traders mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. There's Market Women Association, Association is there. Yeah. There are other quasi um, micro mm -hmm. organizations. Mm -hmm they should have in their first line charge the issue of fire and security and before they start talking about funds, monies. So it should be a first line charge, a first line issue for all of them okay. because that is sustainability. Mm -hmm. Now, people have done their best for two, three years only to lose it in one night. Yeah, exactly. And everybody, and there's no social security mm. net. So this is a time better than others to call on government to make one of those standards, uh, I believe uh, AEPB and uh, environmental and the other groups in Abuja, okay. uh, governmental, uh, uh, to tell them to make sure those t facilities and it should work in tandem where they shouldn't work uh, opposing each other. Mm. It should be where AEPB comes up and says, we can do this fire service, we can, can do, do this, this for you. And then a collaboration. Yes, and then yeah, that will help. Okay. And that will mitigate. Okay. Wow. Thank you for coming on Good Morning Abuja. Like Thank you've you. told us a whole lot. We've learned a lot. I think we've taken <laughs> note of what you've told us so far. So have you come some other time to give us more tips on how to handle fire disasters in the FCT? So we've been Thank speaking you. with Stephen Uboli. He is the environmental and disaster risk management expert. And together we've talked about mitigating some of these fire disasters that has happened in the FCT. We'll go on a short break and after that the program continues.